Now let's go for the artificial neural network project, Python project. We're going to take one Python project for the artificial neural network model. So suppose I'm going to take Moon data set. It is a built-in data set. So number one step is to import all the respective libraries. This is the very first step in the Python language. For example, import TensorFlow as TF. From TensorFlow import Keras and then import tensorflow.keras.models import sequential comma model and then import numpy as np and then from sklearn.model selection import train test split and then from sklearn import datasets look we need tensorflow tensorflow is a python library if you don't know about tensorflow you first go and study about the tensorflow that what is tensorflow the short form of the tensorflow can be tf it can be any name, it is up to you. It is not restricted that you must put GF. It can be GSF. It can be GFL. It is exactly up to you. It can be simply T. It is just a short form where you don't need to write this everything. You simply put GF for the TensorFlow. And then from the TensorFlow input Keras. Keras is a sub-model of the TensorFlow library. And then from TensorFlow.Keras.Models, which means that models is the sub-model of the Keras now at this time. Keras is the sub-model of the TensorFlow and then models is the sub-model of the Keras. Import sequential, sequential comma model. Look, we have two types of model. One is sequential model and the other is the functional model. Sequential model is a model where we have some kind of limitation. The layer in the neural network is in a sequence, in a sequence. We are not talking about the sequential data where INN is used. We are just talking about the sequential neural network and the functional neural network. Functional neural network is a bit complex where we can connect one layer with the two layers or maybe with the three layers or maybe with the four layers. It is not restricted that you must connect the one layer with the front layer. Functional model is unlike a sequential model where we must connect a layer with only with a layer in front of it. In a functional model, we can connect one layer with multiple layers. So it is a bit complex compared to the sequential model. We are not talking about the functional model here. We are talking about the simple sequential model. And then import numpy as np. Again, np is a short form for the numpy. Numpy is an array which is used in the deep learning. If you don't know, first study about the numpy. That what is numpy? Numpy is a Python library again. And then from the scikit-learn, scikit-learn means scikit-learn, that model selection import train test split. This model selection is the sub-model of the scikit-learn library. Again, scikit-learn is a Python library. Import train test split. Import this term train test split. Why we import it? We import it for splitting the data in the train and test sections. We import it for splitting the data in the training and testing. And then from the scikit-learn, which is a scikit-learn import data sets. Simply import data sets. This born data set exists in the scikit-learn. It is a built-in data set in the scikit-learn. And then from the scikit-learn dot data sets, import macmoons. Remember, first we import data sets from the scikit-learn. And then we go deep down inside the scikit-learn to take the sub-model. This data set is actually the sub-model of the scikit-learn. And then from inside of the data set, we import macmons. Remember, in the scikit-learn, we have different kind of data sets. We have many data sets. So within these data sets, I'm only importing macmons. I'm only importing macmons data set. So I'm going to import macmons out of the data sets, which is inside the scikit-learn. Again, it is a built-in data set. It is not something which I have developed. It is a built-in data set in the scikit-learn. You simply need to import it. Now one thing you have to be noted, if you haven't installed TensorFlow library, just simply write pip install TensorFlow in the Colab or in the Jupyter or in the Visual Studio, it will be installed. So once it installed, then it works. For example, if you run all the libraries and still you get an error, you have to go first and check that whether I have installed the TensorFlow or not. If you haven't, just simply write pip install pip install TensorFlow it will be installed to your system and then you can go further now go for the second step which is the load and generate the data this is the second phase of the project 
we have to load and generate the data where I put np.random.crf0 and then x comma y equals to make months of 200 comma nice equals to 0 0.20 and then x train comma x test comma y train comma y test equals to x train test split of x comma y comma test size equals to 0 0.23 comma random state equals to 42 look I'm using numpy array what is np np is the short form of the numpy array I repeat it look it is just a simple name for the numpy you can give any name you can simply put p you can simply put py you can simply put pm it is just a simple name for the numpy array so I'm gonna use numpy here and then I will use a random function to get random values and then dot c of zero and then x comma y equals to mac months of 200 comma nice equals to 0 0.20 look the x values like along x axis I have 200 values and along y values I have 0 0.20 so this nice is my y value this 200 is the x value these are the x values these are the x values I have used mac months function and then x train comma x test y train comma y test it is exactly like what we have done in the machine learning and then we have used train test split function if you remember I told you that we are importing this function because we want to split the data into train and test so x comma y comma test size equals to 0 0.23 comma random state equals to 42 so what do we got we gave the test size equals to 0 0.2 which means that 20 percent 20 percent the random state out of this data out of this macmons data it is 42 so we picked 42 random points we picked 42 random data points out of this I gave the test size equals to 0 0.23 which means that 23 percent 0 0.23 means 23 percent 23 percent is the test size 77 percent is the training size so we have split the data into train and test phases for the test size we gave a 0 0.23 which is 23 percent for the training we gave 77 percent so there we have loaded and generated the data and now step number three to create the NN model what kind of NN model sequential NN model because remember we have imported sequential model so we need to create a sequential artificial neural network model not functional neural network model now don't forget this code has been done in the colab you can use the Jupyter you can use visual studio it is up to you but I'm trying the colab here so these are all the codes that have been taken from the colab now step number three create a sequential artificial neural network model this is the third step where we need to create the model look the process of the deep learning and the machine learning are almost the same we have to follow the same procedure here in the deep learning what we have done in the machine learning look this time I want to create a sequential artificial neural network model we already know that we have two types of model one is sequential model and the other is the functional model sequential is a basic simple model where we put layers in a sequence so it's not very complex there is a restriction in the sequential model we cannot share one layer with the multiple layers at one time like one layer with the two layers or with the three layers or with the four layers at one point but when you go for the functional model there is no restriction it is a complex model there is a complexity where you can share a layer with the multiple layers you can share one layer with the three layers or with the four layers are with the five layers so there is no restriction in the functional artificial neural network model sequential model is a simple model look it is not something about the sequential data we are not talking about the sequential data where we need to use the RNN we are talking about the sequential model not data so here I'm using a simple sequential artificial neural network model so here is a simple coding in the colab there we have created a sequential artificial neural network model look we have model equals to sequential of parenthesis so with this one line of code with only with only this one line of code we have created a sequential artificial neural network model now if we are enrolled to my machine learning course exactly follow the same steps deep learning carries the same steps it is exactly the same thing what we were trying in the machine learning so with this one line of coding model equals to sequential of parenthesis we have created a sequential artificial neural network model and then model.add dense of 12 comma 
input dimension equals to two, comma activation function equals to ReLU. So what we are trying, we are adding a dense layer. What is dense layer? Dense layer is the hidden layer. So in the first hidden layer, we have 12 neurons. This 12 means 12 neurons with the input two, inputs are two. And then the activation function, activation function in the hidden layer is a ReLU, a rectified linear unit activation function. If you go back to the section of the activation function, activation function can be used in the hidden layer as well as in the output layer. And then we add another dense layer or another hidden layer with eight neurons. And again, we use activation function, which is ReLU activation function. And then we add the final layer, the final dense layer, the hidden layer, which is the output layer with a one neuron, which means that the output is one and the activation function is sigmoid. Now don't forget, we can only use sigmoid function in the output layer. So if we have sigmoid function here, it means that we are talking about the output layer, output layer which has one neuron. So we have total four layers here. One is the input layer with the two neurons and then the hidden layer with the 12 neurons with the activation function very low. And then the second hidden layer applying rail activation function. And then the output layer with a one neuron. This one means one neuron, which takes sigmoid activation function. Now we are trying them practically in the NN project with the help of the Python language. So that's what we do in the Python. We already know that what is hidden layer. We already know that what is rail activation function, what is sigmoid function, what is output layer, what is input layer. And what is sequential model? What is functional model? You have already idea now. So it is pretty easy to go for the Python programming. You will understand everything. If you have the background of the deep learning, you must know the background of the deep learning. Step number four, compile the NN model. Now let's do compilations of the artificial neural network in Python language. Its coding will be model.compile of loss equals to binary cross entropy comma optimizer equals to atom, comma matrix equals to accuracy. Well, this is a one line of coding for the compilation of the artificial neural network. We do model, model.compile. Compile is a function which is used for compilation. So model.compile of loss equals to binary cross entropy. For example, if we need output in a binary form, then we go for the binary cross entropy for the loss. But if it is other than the binary, then we use sparse cross entropy. Optimizer equals to Adam. Why we use Adam? We use Adam to update the random values in the model. So we use Adam as an optimizer. And then matrix equals to accuracy. From matrix, we use the accuracy. We want to find the accuracy of the model. I repeat it. We do compilation of the artificial neural network model here, where we use model.compile of loss equals to binary cross entropy. We use binary cross entropy for the loss if we need output in a binary form and then the optimizer as an atom we use atom optimizer and then accuracy in the matrix now let's go for the step number five where we need training of the artificial neural network model we want to train the model here so with the one line of coding model that fit of x comma y comma epochs equals to 150 comma batch size equals to 10. when you run it you will get this form of output so it is a one line of coding where we train the model we use fit function for training the model. So we use model.fit of x comma y. x shows the data points along x axis. y shows the data points along y axis comma epochs equals to 150. Remember last time we studied that what is epoch? Epochs is a complete cycle of forward and then backward propagation. One complete cycle equals to one epoch. So we have 150 epochs here for this model to be trained, which means that we are gonna do 150 times forward and backward, forward and backward, forward and backward. So each time the model will update the random values of the weights and the bias according to the desired output. But then we distributed the epochs into batch size. We made 10 batches out of the epochs, which are 150. Therefore, the iteration will take place in 10 phases. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The batch size is the 10, which means that one batch size will take 10 epochs. So 150 divided by 10 will be 15. So there will be 15 phases of the epochs, which is forward and backward propagation. Because we made 10 epochs from 150, that equal to 15 phases. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So total number of epochs are 150. The batch size is 10. So divide 150 by 10. It equals to 15. It takes place in 15 phases. This is the training of the artificial neural network model. We train the model. Here we need to get the desired output. So the training takes place here during forward and backward propagation according to the output. Now look, you can select the number of epochs. As I told you, epochs is a complete cycle of forward and backward propagation. So you can select 150 epochs. They can be 200, can be 500, can be 1000 epochs. It depends on your model. So the more you have epochs, the better you will train your model. It depends on your model. Here 150 parks means that 150 times the forward and backward propagation takes place. Then at the end we get the desired output. So now everything has been cleared in the Python language, what we have studied theoretically last time. We studied epochs, we know about bed size, we know the optimizer, we know the matrix, accuracy, we know the training of the model. So almost everything is the same what we have done in the machine learning course. If you haven't enrolled to my machine learning course, I highly recommend it to enroll there. It is a fundamental. So once you study that course, deep learning will be very, very easy for you. So you have to understand the machine learning and then the libraries of the machine learning before to go for the deep learning. Now step number six, which is the final output. This is the final phase where we need some kind of evaluation. I want to test my model. So this is the final evaluation of the model. This is the coding in the Python language in Colib. Accuracy equals to model that evaluate of x comma y and then percentage of accuracy times 100. So when you run it, you will get 97% accuracy. So this is the final stage where we can check the accuracy level, the status of the model. Now look at here in step number four during compilation, we need matrix where we need accuracy. So when you take the print of accuracy times 100, you will get 97% accuracy. So this model is 97% accurate. It is in a very good condition. This model is in a very good condition. The loss is only 0.1094, which means that the loss is only 10%. So the loss of the model is 10% and the accuracy level is 97%, which is more than enough. So indeed, it is a very good model. So we have built the model, we have trained the model, and then we got the output of the model. As we know that this project is about the MON dataset which is the built-in data set in scikit-learn library. What is scikit-learn library? It is a library in Python language. So we have created the model. What kind of model? Sequential model. And then we trained it. Then we saw the final evaluation here with the accuracy of 97% with the last 10%. So here is the end of the project. It is a very, very simple artificial neural network project in the Python language. I hope you got all the points of artificial neural network model in deep learning.